Hi, I'm Austin. And I'm Dan. And we're here to play games. Badly. Oh, yes. Welcome back to Persona 3 Reload, where we like to run around in Tartarus at the moment. Uh, yeah, yeah. We, uh, <laughs> we're in our latest uh, Dark Hour um, Tartarus run here. Uh, as a reminder, we are going up to yes, yes, yes. floor 198 uh, today. Yeah, and we are... Sitting pretty at floor one seventy something, seventy one. One seventy one. Yep. yep. So yes, indeed. Um, there's a couple of things we'll be getting along the way here. Uh, we do also have some cool stuff to talk about as we move forward through this. Yep. So, uh, but first, yep. first things first. If this is your first time here, um, with us in Persona All Three, right, let's get started. Welcome. I'm sure you'll have a good time. But if you do want to see this entire series from the first episode and not from, you know, 80 hours into the game, feel free to check out the top right corner. We've got a card that's got the full playlist in it. You can check it out there. One, one to 43 so far at the time of this recording. So, <laughs> yeah, plenty. Yes, indeed. Plenty, plenty, plenty to unpack. And we had a lot happening last time. We... Uh, hold up a second. Did you want to start with this party? Are we good? Yeah, I figure we start here and, and just adjust as go. Okay. Yeah, sounds good. Just making sure before we get moving. <laughs> yep. yep. Last time uh, we had uh -huh. left or we had returned from a cliffhanger mm -hmm. where Chidori had called out the party and we fought against her for a few rounds. Things happened. And unfortunately... We lost Chidori. But in the process, Junpei was awakened to his persona through the merger of Medea and Hermes. Yep. And then later. Trismegistus. Right. Hermes, yeah, Trismegistus. And then that led to his second theurgy as well, a little bit later. And there was also some weird stuff going on with um, Ryoji. A AKA weird not stuff. Pharos. <laughs> yeah, weird stuff with Ryoji. Um, and yeah, we're, we are speculating he's Pharos, as well as the transmogrification of, of Chidori's body, which was weird. Right. Yeah, that's where we kind of ended it. So there's there's lots to unpack still. Yep. But for now, and. we're going to get through here, rescue some people, and as promised, discuss some of our perspective of the Arcana and how they tie into party members and the like. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. Let's. Yeah. Go. So before we um, get to that, do you have any other thoughts on the weird occurrence? Oh, hey. Oh, what we got here. New block and a wow. Are we in a disco? Yeah, look at that. That's real trippy. All right. The fortune teller mentioned that I will face an adversary clad in gold. Maybe I'll run into a rare enemy. Wow. All right. Well, that was real fast. This place is wild. Yeah, I really like this. Hey, come back. All right. Wow, let's take a look here. Enemy. It'd be great if Imprudent we Maya and Luxury Hand. So I believe this is Haraba. All right. Imprudent Maya is weak to Pierce and Lightning. Oh, okay. And then Ooh. what's the hand called? Luxury. Luxury, okay. okay. Luxury hand resists all fizz, nulls all elements. So either hit it with fizz and attempt to um, crit it or throw Almighty at it. Anything that's got Almighty on it? Yeah, I think so. Let's Let's look here. I'm not seeing it. You've gone. I thought I saw it, but no, maybe not. All right. Yeah, we don't have an almighty persona at the moment. We will I, change I that feel eventually, like, but... I feel like I'm a failure. Go back to... Uh, never mind. Don't worry about it. Uh, just use Fizz on it. That's two, right? Spirit Drain is almighty. We don't have it, but Spirit Drain is almighty. Oh, that's what you were seeing. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Yep. Mm, let's see. Heavy slash stench. Oh, we said Pierce. For the other Pierce, ones, though, yeah. Right? Yeah. Okay. Mm, that's one foe, but yeah, you you can use it on them and down them. 
I don't know if we're going to be able to deal with this guy with, with just Fizz, but let's give it a try. Oh, it's not bad. Yeah. All right. So, uh, we'll just keep working on him. Yeah, I agree. Get him down and we can deal with the rest we'll of them. The yep. We'll do this Artemisia. one. Nice. Seeing grit. That's it. Enemy down. I'll take it. Okay. Yeah. I'll show you. Hey, awesome. Oh, another crit too. Yep. And she's piercing, right. so we'll this will work out really well in our favor. Yeah, yeah, piercing will work. That's good. Excellent. This is good. Got lucky there. Yeah, that's not so bad. I think um, being, I am I think being able to reduce its evasion uh, really helped. Cool. Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Ma Masakunda is pretty nice. So glad we got it. Oh, look at that experience. <laughs> yeah. <That's laughs> this is getting good well. right here. All right. Um, there is a request that requires... It's one of those <laughs> yeah, this place is trippy. Um, the Greedy Shadows. Kaiden Musha. Okay, hold on. Take a look here. Kaiden Musha it resists all fizz, is weak to wind. So use Gyarodyne. Perfect. Thanks, Mata. Nice. Oh, I like that. Good damage. Anyway, you were saying something about this place being trippy? Yeah, it was trippy. I was trying to talk about something before that. Oh, yeah, Greedy Shadow. Um, which I think the Greedy Shadow is um, where you have to, like, run through all those sections. Right? It's like the first person thing. Oh, yeah. Because it's trying to, like, yeah, 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 take yeah. all the treasure. Mm -hmm. So. Um, yeah, up to you on this one. Yeah, Mazianga is good. So that is a, a request between floor 173 and 198. If we can Let's defeat one of those, that'll be a request. But then if we can't, we can just come back. Ooh, that's a good treasure. Place is so crazy looking. I know it's gonna take me a minute to like get a, accustomed to the the way the mapping is gonna work in here. It's is so there motion, drastically different. Is there motion blur in this game? Uh, there might be. I don't know. Okay, <laughs> I can take a look. Uh, config graphics probably. No. Okay. Or at it's, least there's not a setting for it. Right. right. Understood. It's probably just the colors, but I swore I could see a little bit of blur for a second there. So. We have even with uh, motion blur turned off, there's still some blurring elements just because of the way our eyes work. I feel like. Hey, there's a treasure chest. Yep. <clears throat> um. Okay. So oh for God, missing persons, the by the way, are fr oh yeah, you can use lightning on these guys too if you want. Good. If you want a multi-hit. Mazionga or Mazi Yeah, that'll work too. Myriad arrows. Yep. We keep getting distracted. Yeah, it's okay. Um, first missing person is floor 177. Okay. Shuffle time. Yakunda. Got three of those. We're good with that. Yeah. EXP? Yeah, like that. We can hold a lot of Arcana cards, too. That was excellent leadership. Thanks. Keep up the good work. Garnix. I really feel like I'm in a... in a really trippy, like, situation where, like, it's, like, art club, art lava lamp, art something mm -hmm. else. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. Um... So this yeah. is where this relatively linear there. Yeah. <laughs> yes, it does. It's awful distracting, so be on the lookout for ambushes. Oh, there's a treasure chest. Makes me wonder what's coming after this. Uh, is is there another block after this? Uh, yes. The oh. scenery in this area. Get out of here. This is Haraba, which is the second to last oh, block in Tartarus. Gotcha. 
Crazy twins. What next? Uh, weak to dark. Ooh. Do not use light or electric on them. Alright, I'll do this then. Um, one thing I think we wanted to talk about were the Arcanas. Yep. Um, so I wanted to kick it off. I mean, we can always start with the Fool, but I think the Magician is going to be an interesting one. Um, so just to make it clear, we are coming from the perspective of the party members' personas at this point, not necessarily the social links. Um, I really feel like talking about the social links is going to be a good idea to do later. Hmm. Um, but yeah, we'll circle back to that. But I think with regards to the party member personas, we've got access to most of it at this point. And uh, there are a few things I wanted to talk about in light of uh, Junpei and Chidori from the last episode. So Yeah, it seems um, pertinent to start with them. Yeah. Let's see, what do we got here? So, the Magician, um, Junpei Iori, uh, obviously his persona well. is Magician Arcana. So, the Magician represents uh, being equipped with the skills and abilities to be successful in your life goals, needing only to use your intellect, concentration, and your will to make things happen. What do we got here? Cursed Dice. Maybe code switch in a bit here. Curse dice. Resist all fizz. Use wind. Do not use light or dark. Um. So to be clear, we are talking about what the magician represents if you get it in a fortune. Um. Right. It also. These things are in the context of the fool's journey. Uh, the fool's journey, which. The idea is you're going through the major arcana. Uh, the fool is the arcana zero. Um, and it's basically when your fortune is being read, the idea is this is where you are on your journey. Um, so using these as character lens ideas is a pretty interesting and cool aspect of persona in my opinion. Um, so with regards to what I've just said, um, I think, Austin, you had a thought on the, his theurgy gauge, right? If you wanted to oh, go through that one. Yeah, yeah. So, um, okay, now what? with the con like the understanding is that... Um, hold on. Hmm? I'll show you. Yeah, the that's magician a good idea. has the ability innately within them to push past the things that get in their way. Mm -hmm. Well, with Junpei's theurgy, his, it builds the more successful he is in attacking, essentially. Right. I'm ready. So in, in that way, like he, I know when we think magician, we tend to think like um, actual magic, but in this case, it's you know through his. He's getting physical pumped will. up. Yeah, he's he's right? literally pumping himself up. Right. Very now confused here. I think. Yeah. Yeah. So with that in mind. Um, his first persona is Hermes, who we'll just go through the description. Man, we're kind of getting hit with status effects here. Yeah, healings. <laughs> um, is that distress? It is. Yeah, I think it is, yeah. The Apatra gem. For one ally. Yeah, I would do a Maypatra gem. Better use this. Oh, okay, that um, does take care of stress. I just wasn't reading it right. Yep. Shall I move to strike? That knocks all that out, so that's really good. Yep. Anyway. Um Hermes is a messenger god who serves Zeus. His wing sandals allow him to fly and he was worshipped as a god of travel and commerce. He was also known as a trickster, being able to freely cross between the mortal and godly realms. Um, he was also gifted the Caduceus by Apollo in exchange for a lyre. Um, and that's... Uh, ooh, the tower. Um, that sort of symbolizes medicine. You can see it, um, you know, kind of the, the snakes around 
um, the, the the snake symbols around kind of the, the staff there. Yeah. Ooh, it's a we want to keep concentrate. Yeah, it's really common in a lot of like medical hospital uh, logos and stuff. You can see the form of the caduceus. Yeah, absolutely. Hold on, let's let's fix this real quick. So with Mitsuru, um, if we wanted to keep Fatal End and Neuro Slash, uh, which it's up to you if you want to drop one of those oh, we in favor about of the other. Dropping Marin Karen. We can drop Marin Karen. Um, you know, that's obviously it's one status thing out of our repertoire, but I think that is a good idea. Yeah, because well, both these have a chance of inflicting a status effect anyway, so... So do ice skills, so yeah. Right. We'll concentrate. Concentrate's going to be really, really good for her in the long run, that so that's worthwhile. Well. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it is very common in medical settings. Um, I know it, it wasn't this series, but we talked about House at one point in our Liza P playthrough, and there is teleport, art of no House, and there the Caduceus is used in many scenarios in, in the show and in kind of promotional art for the show as well. That so, chest yeah, look very like common. Um, and yeah, I mean, it, it, it is, there's a little bit of an association with the Trismegistus evolution, but we'll get to that here in just a second. Um, speaking of, actually, yeah, let's let's oh, switch gears yeah. here. Ooh, that's awesome. Yeah. Who are we gonna level up? We'll have to figure out who's the lowest and go from there. But yeah. The stairs. Let's go. I don't wanna do that just yet. I wanna explore the oh, rest we of this. There's parts there of the map I haven't explored yet. Oh, you're right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, so yeah, we'll switch gears. Um, so we're going to talk about the hangman real quick, and we're going to go back to a uh, magician here. Let's move on. The reason for that is Chidori Yoshino's uh, persona is, um, uh, Medea is a hanged man arcana persona. Hmm. Or was at this point. Right. Um, let's make our decision here. It's two people, right? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Junpei. Yep. Those are real Amata. obvious ones. That's yep. nearly 10 levels for each of them. Yeah, that's amazing. So we're going to be bringing them in when we switch party members next. Yep. Which, <laughs> Which is, is fine because I, I want to test uh, the new theurgy for Junpei. Yeah. Oh, All right. Yeah. Tarnus appears to have a special little guest today, and between its jaws, it clinches a fragment and emits a curious blue light. Should you curious to get the best of you? Floor 168. All right, well, okay. since we're moving around anyway. Yeah. yeah. Um. So, real quick, the hangman uh, represents feeling confined or stuck in a rut without direction. Um with the solution being to release yourself from your rut. So it could require walking away from a situation you're in or changing your perspective, uh, mainly by stepping outside yourself and giving the situation some time and right. room to breathe. Um. I'm going up toward 168 now. Yeah, might as well. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Didn't want to go back one floor? You can't go back. You can only go forward. Okay. Okay. All right. So, um, yeah, and I think let me just make sure I'm looking in the right place here. Yeah. Okay. So one of the ideas yeah, stuck in a rut idea like is that one might interpret it as Chidori being pulled out of her rut by Junpei after being abandoned by Strega. Um, not the party necessarily. So that could be a situation she was dealing with. Um, and that could kind of go along with some of what the hangman represents. Um, Medea is a figure from Jason and the Argonauts. Um, and she marries and eventually kills his other bride and their children. Uh, so Medea and Jason's children in revenge for being abandoned. Because Jason had to abandon her to marry um, the, his promised uh, wife. Basically for his deeds he was given a new wife and she got revenge um, she also has the ability to restore youth and heal people through her spells and potions yeah 
um, which kind of lends credence to the healing ability. There are stories where she was deceptive on that. Uh, she tricked people into uh, like, how the person has to be diced into pieces for me to heal them. Um, and so she ends up like making sure one of her children takes over a city instead of the king that she was supposed to be healing. Um, that's obviously before she killed everyone in revenge. Um, so Medea has a bit of a dark, bloody history, but also is a healer in a way, which is very interesting for, for Chidori and uh, kind of her story. Hit them levels. Good grief. All right. So we got several abilities here. Let's make sure we're doing well here with this. So... Yeah, uh, heavy slash damage to all foes. I feel like that's just Over a straight upgrade of Blade of Fury, honestly. Blade, what does Blade of Fury do? Weak slash, two to four hits. Yeah, yeah, overwrite that. Like, multi-hits are nice, but I think the power differential is so high. High counter. Uh, upgrade counter strike. They do not stack together. Yep. And Vile, Vile Assault. Assault. Yep. All That's right. a solid upgrade, and Agadine is next. That's awesome. Yep. <laughs> Guess I'm growing up fast. Zayadine. Over Zionga. Yep. Mahaman. Meh. Yeah, just drop that. <laughs> we don't need Mahamayon. Meh. <laughs> yeah. Mediarahan next for it. Ken. That's pretty awesome. Yep. All right. Take care to conserve your strength for the return trip. All right. Don't push yourself. Good. So. Sometimes one there might be a teleporter nearby when we decide to head back. One might interpret um, the gift of the Caduceus by Apollo as so a little bit, a little bit of a parallel to Medea fusing with Hermes. Um, it's not exactly the same, but it is, you know, the gift of the healing staff, uh, healing power type thing. That's, okay, I think you're in good shape with these. So, speaking of uh, Trees Magistus, though, um, he is a Hellenistic figure who represents a blending of the Greek god Hermes and the Egyptian god Toth. His full name is Hermes Trismegistus, means Hermes Thrice Greatest, and he is thought to be the author of the Corpus Hermeticum. Um, so Thrice Greatest refers to the three subjects uh, that he pioneered, uh, which... I appear to not have noted that down. Let me just look at that real quickly here, because I want to make sure we are specific on this. I'm ready to go. Me? Do it. Leave it to me. Keep it together. Yeah. Uh, I don't recall. Wrench him. Yeah, okay, okay. So, Thrice Greatest refers to alchemy, magic, and astrology, I believe, with regards to Trismegistus. So, it's kind of an epithet slash title uh, for Hermes at a certain point. Um, it is interesting that, mythologically speaking, it's a merge between Hermes and, and the Egyptian god Toth. Uh, it's one of the things... That is interesting about some of our party members. There's Greek philosophy or Greek, Greek mythology and Egyptian mythology that kind of merges. Like it's intriguing. Yeah. Can I igno yeah. Ignore that door. I am. Okay. I am. Hmm. I'm probably against my better judgment, but yes, oh, I'm going to ignore the monad doors in favor of just getting to 168 to get the cat. It looks a little hot okay. on that floor. How's everyone feeling? Because I'll probably be back anyway. <laughs> yeah. At some point, so. Uh, to level up more. What? Yes, and indeed. It'll take us back to the entrance, we'll need more levels. Keep going. Oh, yeah. Uh, do you have any thoughts on uh, those arcana so far? Also, I think we covered it pretty, pretty well, but. Uh, um, yeah, so, I mean, specifically the abandonment thing. I think that you read my comment 
on our notes, mm -hmm. uh, which is just that, you know, the you similarity here being that she maybe she felt abandoned by Strega, especially right before um, she oh, sacrificed herself, right? Yes. Um, to revive Junpei. Mm -hmm. And I think I find it especially interesting because... Junpei is legitimately experiencing a rebirth. Yeah. Um, Sometimes because of it, like which is something that we don't normally get right? when we talk about like the the death of Kana later. Which is, I know that's not tied in to this specifically, but mm. he's like he's uh, dealing with an actual physical Looks like we can head up. resurrection. So it's like he's right. a Let's continue exploring. A different person to some degree, especially with um Yeah. Ooh, I spy some treasure. Especially with the, the merger of Medea and Hermes. Mm -hmm. Excellent. We have the yep. It's all different for him. It is a very very radical change on the part of Junpei, uh, which is interesting, really, given kind of what he's been through most of the game. Right. I can take over any time. Yeah. I, I did find that particular plot point in the last episode to be a very powerful one, and I think that's why I wanted to kind of open this discussion with that information, because I think it's it's pretty salient to what occurred there. There's still a few left. Not bad. <laughs> Brutal. <laughs> Yeah, so when he's successfully hitting people, you can see his energy gauge builds up a lot faster. Mm hmm. He's so pumped. Yeah. There we go. That's right, Iori. We're talking about your transformation. Here's a slide. Uh, Up to you. You got one of those. I mean, it's. I love resist cards because I think they're useful. Yeah, so, it'd be yeah. worth holding on to another one. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> oh, Junpei. Hey. Um. Sure. Come on, dude. <laughs> Come on. What's up, dude? What's up, dude? Um. Here we stats. Let me look at this real quick. Your stats. Yeah, after letting critical hit, he becomes motivated by his own potential. Yeah, hey, there you go. Yeah, so that's that magician in him. Mm-hmm. It's an enemy. Yeah. Can we attack? It's cool because one of the interesting things to me about uh, fortune telling and the arcana and tarot in general is just how subjective all of it is. Um, it, it's really, really cool stuff, but it's also like, how do you interpret this? That? It's all about... You know, from your perspective, what do these things mean to you? Right. Here's the suggestion of what you might be dealing with, All and right. you kind of go from Let's there. It's sort of why, you know, there's sort of a difference between looking at these concepts and being like, ah, uh, yes, this is absolutely what all of this means, and I know names and specifics of your life. You know, like, there's there are charlatans out there as well. Right. Um, and the line is kind of thin there, but, I mean, you know. To get back to the narrative, uh, uh the narrative implications of, of these concepts. And we're gonna find the kitty here. Yep. Hey, kitty. Uh, Gotta okay. rescue the kitties. Yeah. Oh, there's a treasure chest. There we what? go. Anyway, I need to protect it, please. Okay. Uh, actually, yeah. Let's take it back yes. to the entrance. It's fine. Yeah, we'll take it back. Let me get that. Get back to the new block here. Yep. Fragment. Oh, that was five of them, too. That was worth it. That was awesome. Um, Welcome back. Gotta save the kitties. Yep. I'll keep um, Mitsuru and Junpei and Ken in my party for now. Okay. Sounds good. Because we want to see both Mitsuru and Junpei's new Gergis. I agree. Okay. Let's oh, make yeah. some progress. This is what we're... <laughs> All right, the next floor. All right. I'm not calling it quits so, yet. So, yeah, I will go ahead and move on unless you have any more thoughts on magician and hanged man there. No, I, th I think we got it's hard to covered it. And watch but out for okay, um, <clears throat> if if you guys Let's who are watching this have any questions, 
uh, by all means, it's let us enemy. know because this is the kind of stuff that we love to talk about and really engage in some discourse with. Yeah, yeah, we definitely want to see your thoughts here. Is uh, Juno. Um, I actually wanted to talk about High Priestess next, so well, that worked out. <clears throat> yeah, Ap 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 apostate tower. All right, so weak to fire. Uh, do do not use ice or electric on it. All right. Um, the High Priestess, uh, Fuka Yamagishi. Um, the High Priestess Arcana represents. Intuition, mystery, and sensuality combined with common sense uh, indicates the need to trust your instincts and go with your gut feeling. Uh, so I think it's kind of an interesting, you know, kind of trust yourself phase of your life. Um, mm -hmm. And you can kind of see that with some of, I, I feel, Fuka's, um, at least her social link. Yeah, her social link um, journey especially is this mm -hmm. element of her kind of really coming into her own. Yeah, yeah, and just her in general, you know, like that's sort of, uh, and we'll get into that more with her evolution, but some of her main storyline stuff is also very much that way. Yeah, I think you've got these mapped. Yep. Um, Fuka's first persona, Lucia, is a saint who was martyred during the persecution of Christianity in the time of the Roman Empire. Uh, and this was the pre-Constantine Roman Empire um, persecution, basically attempting to force worship of the Roman gods. So in Constantine's time, he made Christianity the state religion of the Roman Empire, and so that ended that persecution period. Uh, but Lucia was tortured and had her eyes gouged out, um, but by a miracle, her sight was restored. She's re revered as the patron saint of the blind, um, which is sort of there's an irony to that given yeah, this Austin this was your comment uh, if you want to take it but oh, yeah. she uses yeah yeah um, yeah it's just it's ironic right because Fuka uses this persona who is representative of the saint of the blind mm -hmm. to literally see into Tartarus <laughs> right so that was excellent leadership um, Keep up the good work. It's kind of poetic in its own in its own right, too. Obviously, it's but stairs. right, yeah. Because essentially, Lucia would, you know, the, the miracle would have give her a miraculous Understood. form of sight. In that case, right. Let's... So it's 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 still fitting. It's it's very interesting. It's an interesting choice for a navigator. Uh, I I quite like it. Yeah. It's pretty cool. Yeah, I think so. Um. um well, and just the nature yeah. of saint as well. I think. Um, um, mm -hmm. is worth holding on to because of the being priestess for one. Um, sure. But also when we think of saints, we tend to think of this specific like mindset uh, or not mindset, but like a um, temperament. That's sort of what looking for. It's like when you think of like St. Teresa, right? Or various other notable saints. They have this, they're usually associated with um very patient, calm, you know, people. Demir? Demir. <laughs> yes. <laughs> In general, yeah. Um, I really don't want to deal with him. He's a butt. Um, so. Get rid of him. Yeah. That's not going to be enough. Good start, though. Yep. Keep it together. Um. Anyway, uh, Fuka kind of emits some of those temperaments. Okay. She doesn't get, like, worked up a whole lot. She, even when she does, she's still very... Ah, reserve's not quite the right word. Um, subdue? I don't know. It's Persona. hard to... R reserved is close, but... Yeah, I, I know what you mean. It, it's... What's the plan here? You can tell what she's feeling, but she is not being very loud with it. Right. Yeah. She approaches it with a with a calm demeanor most of the time. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um. She internalizes 
her struggles more so than externalizing onto the party. Yes, yes. Um, there's some of the uh, unwarranted self-loathing, you know, trope happening with her, where everything is, I'm sorry, you know. Um, but at the same time, she's also a very capable party member. Look at Junpei's face on the right there. It's <laughs> yeah. freaking hilarious. Freaking dice. Yep. Um. So the second evolution for Fuka is uh, Juno, uh, who's the goddess of family and marriage and wife to the Roman god Jupiter. Uh, she is often equated with the Greek goddess Hera. So she is kind. She is also vengeful, seeking to punish women who have affairs with her husband. Uh, Juno is also known as Regina or Queen, showing warlike aspects as well as being the goddess of marriage. Um, she's also one of the most theologically complex goddesses in the Roman mythos. Um, in looking at Juno, because uh, I'd never really given Juno a close look before, one of the more interesting uh, goddesses I've, you know, gods or goddesses that I've seen in mythology. Um, well worth a look, in my opinion. Juno is a really cool figure. Uh, there's a lot of diversity and <laughs> to the point of contradiction in Juno's character. Um, and so, yeah, it's it's pretty cool because there's a little bit of an esoteric nature to Juno, which I think is pretty fitting. Uh, it kind of goes along with some of the navigator personas. Uh, Persona 5's Necronomicon is another one mm. that kind of has a weird esoteric meaning to it. Um, so I greatly enjoy that Juno is the second evolution of, of Fuka's sure, yeah. persona. <laughs> yeah, any thoughts on the High Priestess Fuka's set up there? I think it's pretty cool, honestly. Yeah, no, yeah, I agree, I agree. Yeah. Uh, don't really have anything extra to add to this one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a good one though. I think they did a good job go. with her, her character. Do it. Yeah, I agree. I'll do my best. Get him, Ken. Struggling. Virus breath is almighty. Not a great almighty skill. No. Yeah, get that EXP. Not too bad, right? What we need is Megadolon. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. That was brutal to live through before. Yeah. yeah what is the first one we can get Megadolon from? Hey, Not soon enough. Death. Yeah, if we had the DLC, we'd be able to get it relatively soon. As it stands, though, Alice at level 74 is the first. <laughs> Megadola we can get from Decarabia. Alright. Apostate Towers. So, uh, with the High Priestess covered, I think uh, we'll go ahead and move on to the Empress and the Emperor. Uh, and they are uh, Mitsuru, uh, Kirijo and Akihiko Sanada. Right. Um, so we'll start with the Empress. Um, we're kind of going Arcana order. Uh, we are going to circle back to the Fool, though, don't worry. Um, you Fool? Exactly. I was speaking of the Hangman. Look at that. Incense card. Ooh. Guard Incense 3, okay. Cool, 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 cool. Tight, 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 tight. Nice gun, you. Um, so the Empress, Mitsuru Kurijo, uh, the Empress represents femininity and motherhood. Uh, it's a strongly associated with nurturing, creativity, and harmony. Uh, the Empress encourages you to build on your communication with your children and show them your nurturing side. Um, in a way, I think we talked before about how Mitsuru is kind of the leader of the true leader of the party. Um, in my view, certainly. Yeah. So I find the Arcana meaning to be very interesting. Um, she has sort of been closed off for most of the game, but her Arcana, uh, her social link has just started, which uh, should be very interesting. Let's check the Monad stuff here. Now that we're going through this. Yep. 
Let's see. Monad doors. So we were thinking we're that, um, that perhaps part of the reason for that being is that we had to get this new version of her where she's now the head of the Kirija group, right? Right. Yeah. So Mitsuru is currently the matriarch of the Kirijo group, I believe, with her father's death. Um, she is in charge of it, and of course, with the this. business side of things, there's going to be like the board and all this other stuff that will be guiding her and things like that. Right. But she still yeah. has inherited the Carrijo group from her father. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, thus Which, making her essentially the matriarch of the entire group, or like the, the family, the larger right. family of sorts. Right, and she's been trying to figure out, you know, what the hell is going on here. This should be a world balance. Yeah. No weaknesses, no strengths. Just throw whatever you want at it. All right. Um, but yeah, the story events uh, really make Empress kind of come into focus later in the game. Which, you know, it's the newest social link at this point, so it makes sense. Um, in addition, I think her persona make a lot of sense, too. Scarlet Havoc! I love Scarlet Havoc. Ooh. He is. Oh, yeah, she's got a new one. Blade of Execution. Massive all mana damage to one foe and lowers all their stats. This is gonna be good. Amazing. Nice. <laughs> That's solid almighty damage and debilitate. Yeah, that was strong. Outstanding. Yeah, we'll get to Junpei's as well as soon as he charges it up. Yep. How was I weak to light? Who am I using right now? Uh, that's a good question. Let's find out. Oh, Mata. Mata. Okay. Of course. Yep. That's all right. All right. Do I have... Just seeing if I actually have a freeze heal in here. Will salvation. Will salvation do it? Yes. Okay. Excellent. Salvation cures everything except for KO. Gotcha. Let's. Oh, perfect. Let's do that. For everyone. Best heal. Oh yeah, yeah, that's so good. I, all right. I love salvation. Yeah. That's good. Um. All right. Shall I move to strike? Why not? Concentrate. Mitsuru is focused. What's next? Uh, death. Concentrate will be a good one to combine with her blade of execution. I think it's a magical hit. Oh. Yeah, it's almighty. It, it'd be magical. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> that is interesting because there are instances where Fizz Almighty is a thing, in which case you would want to use Charge instead of Concentrate. I don't think this game ever does that, but. Mm. It, it it does happen in, in Megaton. Okay. Oh man. Okay. So either this, one, really. Yeah. I, it's interesting that this says until you leave Tartarus, and this just says during shuffle time. Yeah, I don't know why that's different. Star. Okay. And Maybe it adds an additional one to the lineup. Maybe. Yeah. Well, let's we'll find out. Um, so yeah, uh, circling back to the Empress, Penthesilea was a queen of the Amazons in Greek mythology. She fought for the Trojans during the Trojan War, but was slain by Achilles. When Achilles took off her helmet and saw her beautiful face, he felt great remorse for killing her. <laughs> and <laughs> then Artem Artemisia is the hero que queen of. And I'm gonna I'm gonna do my best with this. Halla Carnassus mentioned in Herodotus's The Histories. During the Persian Wars between the Greek Greek states and Persia, she was the only woman to take command in the Persian fleet. Um, and Artemisia is referring to Queen Artemisia the First of Caria, uh, so because there was more than one Artemisia uh, who was a We're queen well. of Let's Persia, uh, I believe. Yeah. 
or Halicarnassus, not Persia, Halicarnassus. Yeah, Hal Halicarnassus is interesting because um, hey, it also shows up in Final Fantasy, certain Final Fantasies. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, it's interesting to hear that outside of that realm for me. Yeah. Yes. I score. I'll do it. Oh. All right, guys. Thanks. Goodbye. Goodbye. But yeah, um, one yes. thing you had pointed out, Austin, is that both of her personas are queens who ruled during a warring me. era. Yeah. I get the impression that which the I mean, this is for each block in This is a little bit what she's dealing with now. Oh, you're running away. That means I'm high a left level. Nice. Interesting. Oh my goodness. Hey, buddy. Scarlet turret. I Scarlet turret hmm. is. I'll go uh, wait a minute. <laughs> Are we still in Monad here? I got distracted. No, we're not. We're Let's not see. in the Monad anymore. I can't find Scarlet turret. Wait, maybe it's from a previous. Hold on. I think so. Yeah, it is. Scarlet turret electric, is. Yeah, electric. That's right. You got it. I always forget. There's some overlap. I don't have electric. All right. But yeah, uh, Mitsuru, her stuff to me is not obvious on its face, but I think it represents her arc well. And then her persona represent her very, very well, in my opinion. Yeah. Ooh. Ready. This is it. Um, yeah, I agree. Um, so I think the reason why I find it interesting that they're warring queens is because she is herself, Mitsuru, is herself in a war with mm -hmm. uh, the Dark Hour. Um, especially yes. especially now. Um, mm -hmm. Because it took away her father, ultimately. Right. right. Um, and so, not only was she trying to protect her dad, but now she is... But she's also been leading this team of, mm -hmm. of children <laughs> to, to fight these shadows. No, it's two. It's just the same thing as the other one. Okay. Anyway. Yeah, I mean, she certainly, like, it, it's been a fight for her, but that I think she is leadership. in full, you know, work. like, all right, we're doing, we're finishing this right. mode right now. Yep. Resolved. Absolutely. Which, everyone who's gone through a second evolution here is very resolved at this point as well, so. Ooh, salvation. Makes sense. Expensive. Yeah, salvation is very expensive. It'd be cool if we could get Life Aid on a persona that has salvation on it. That would help a lot. Yeah. Alright. Junpei, what did you think of Agadine now? Yeah, I think he needs like three levels to get that. Yeah, probably. <laughs> he's 61, I think he needs 64 to get it. Yep. Ooh. That's a good one. Yeah, it is. The strike. Yeah. Alright. It's, no, it's no resist fizz, but it's good. Excellent. So if we get that other major, we'll be able to pick up three. That'll be good. Yeah, that'll be interesting. Um, so, along the same lines here, we have the Emperor, uh, Akihiko Sanada. Um, the Emperor represents an older man who is good in business and is usually wealthy, or a father figure that is solid and stable. The Emperor is a hard taskmaster and has little time for fun and frivolity. Remind you of anyone? Uh, <laughs> I mean, the dude never stops working out, like... <laughs> Yep, always training, always, you know, on task, focused. Right. Um, There's a strong enemy on the next floor. All right. Could cool. it be? Yeah, I think we're coming up on a... Ooh, ooh greedy shadow, shadow. Closing in on you. Let's see what we can do here. I feel like we must have gotten just, like, really lucky the last time we succeeded at this. Seems like it, yeah. By Let's, the way... Yep, let's chase the thing down. Run, 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 run. Oh. 
I have no idea. Yeah, I, I'm not sure we there's a visual cue for this, so... Sure. Left. Why not? Um. Okay. All right. Um. We'll go right. All right. Okay. Okay. Yes. We'll say right. All right. It's probably wrong, but. Oh, man. Curses. I can't. Man, a two out of three is so frustrating. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of this mechanic, to be honest with you. I feel punk. We'll slap the ground. I'll punch you in your face. <laughs> okay, Glad you're all safe. Okay. Uh, let's see. So obnoxious. Oh, yeah. At least now a full grasp of this floor's layout. Thanks for chasing it. You can get up the stairs. Oh, good. Oh. Oh, there's a rare enemy behind me, though. Oh, it's a rare shadow. Don't let it get away. Might as well, might as well get that one at least. Yeah. Oh, okay. Let's take a look here. Okay. So once Fuka reaches level 64, she is able to break that RNG. In other words, you can use Tartarus Search, her final skill, and it will tell you exactly where it's going. It will reveal the whole layout of the floor. Oh, right. It resists all... Everything okay. All right, blaze of fire. Yeah. Sorry, sorry. So yeah, um, yeah, blaze of life. Let's do it. All right, Kuobara. In case you forgot, I have a sword. Oh, oh that's really sweet. Uh huh. Oh man. I knew you'd like that oh, one. Oh, that might have just become a new favorite one. <laughs> that Ooh, was nice. Cool. Yup. All right. Yeah, Blaze of Life is really cool. Ooh, get, get some levels. Yup. Noel Dark. We gotta put that on him. Yep. <laughs> where to, uh, where to put it is the question. <laughs> I would put it. Samsara is unique, even though it kind of is an instant kill that I don't care about. Um, I would leave it. I would put it over Regenerate 3, mm, honestly. Okay. Um, it, it's Regenerate 3 is nice, but Invigorate 3 is so much better, and Growth 3 is nice. You could put it over Growth 3 if you don't care about leveling this up when it's not in your party anymore, uh, but I would, I would choose Regenerate 3. At, at level 99, we can always just skill card it. Yeah, and that's else the thing it. is I'm trying to consider... Like what? What this will feed into? Yep. And so having a null will be more long term. Be better. God, I love that profile right there. And read a so shower. Nice. So this is um, redundant when it comes to salvation. However, we might want to keep it so we can put it on other persona. Yeah. Um, I would probably put it over Maega or Growth Three. Either one. I'm gonna Growth Three. Sure. Uh, just because I need the dark, I don't think I have something. Oh, I might have one of their persona that's got dark on it, but. And that's mm. right, folks. All right. Okay. All right. So circling back to the emperor here. Um, I'm not sure if it's. And the of our Austin, your comment was that Akiko kind of fits the right, wise, right. reliable man Please being be presented there. Right. Yeah. Um, I initially had used the word sage. Okay. But that's not quite what's being mm. represented here with Emperor. It's it's just one that is thoughtful, mm -hmm. um, and has a steady head on like his shoulders. Yeah. Uh, hope we get there soon. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Let's. One seventy nine. Okay. Yep. Head back down. And save. Make our adjustments. It'd be good to bring Dark into this next fight okay. if you can. Yep. I'm moving on. All right.
What were we talking about? I don't remember. <laughs> uh, I was circling back to Emperor, but we can oh, discuss that's right, that's right. the Guardian as we fight him. So, yeah. Tartarus Guardian time, 4179. Yeah. Um, Let's go. That's a go. All right. Here it comes. Take it down. One target. So this thing this is weak to no dark, I assume. Cultist of the storm, null what strike, resist fire, and weak to dark. Where are you, trumpeter? Yep, yeah. that's the one. Come, persona. Okay. Uh, yeah. So circling back on Akihiko here. So yep. Mitsuru yeah, takes off for like over a week, right? Mm -hmm. So he becomes kind of like the the de facto non tartarus leader of the group during that time. Right. Right. He's the senior. He's he's the leader of the group, um, leaving Makoto still the battlefield leader. Right. Um, and there have been several times we've encountered them during various, like, Link episodes and stuff, too, where Akihiko is coming across as somebody who can give advice. And he's mulling through things. And while the protagonist gives advice to, like, everybody, um, there's still something kind of unique about the interaction with... Oh, that's no light on him. Darkness seems effective here. I'll end this. Um. Yeah, I'll do that. Spears ready. It's just, uh. Go! He seems to be a, a stable element in their group. Yeah. Very consistent, very stable. Oh, I agree. Right. Um, I think I had another note about the Polydeuces and, um,. Shinjiro's. I don't see one here. I think I think it put it with Shinjiro's persona, so we'll oh, come back to that. Yeah, we'll we'll get to that for sure. Yeah, there's there's some relation between um, the Hierophant. We'll cover right after the Emperor here. Yeah, Maragadine. good upgrade. Yeah, so he gets tips to slash too. That's good. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Nice. <laughs> nice. <laughs> 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 Everyone line up since we're on a roll. How about we put the pedal to the metal? You're on fire. No, literally, you're on fire. You're literally on fire. Ah. Damn right I am. Figured just moping around wasn't going to get me anywhere. Well, some answers <laughs> eventually, but why not fight while we're at it? While we wait, at least we'll get stronger. Sometimes you just got to look at the bright side and do what you got to do, you know? Anyway, uh, the choice yeah. is yours. Whether we press on or pull back, I've got your back, dude. 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 Yeah, it's going to be a minute before now? we get to our to second. Levels were like. <laughs> Good question. Uh, our second missing person is on floor 196. So. Oh yeah, it's going to be a hot. We minute. got some more. We got some more guardians to get to uh, get through before we get to the second one there. Mirage sandals. Fascinating. I wonder what those do. Good question. Ice evasion. Okay. Uh, ice weakness is uh, Junpei, on. yeah? Junpei, no, I don't think so. Uh, oh, his is wind? Yeah. Polydeuces. Oh, Akihiko, then. Akihiko, yeah. Caesar is, is weak to ice, ice okay. still. Yup. Yeah, the, the way I'm viewing the party personas, uh, it indicates their first oh, persona name test. only. <laughs> so. uh, yeah. But okay. speaking of Polydeuces, yeah, um, Polydeuces is a hero in Greek mythology. As the son of Zeus and the mortal Leda, he inherited his father's immortality. He and his half-brother Castor were famed fighters and both became stars in the constellation Gemini. Uh... So specifically, Polydeuces is immortal due to being descended from Zeus, as opposed to Castor, who is descended from a mortal. Um, and then it, that'll be relevant here in just a second as we talk about the Hierophant next. 
Uh, and then Akihiko's second evolution, Caesar, um, is an interesting one. Ooh, what's that nine? Masakunda, okay. You got two of those, up to you. Uh, so Caesar uh, is a statesman, general, and author known for his rule over the Roman Republic. His really cool out there, Gorochan. His full name was Gaius Julius Caesar. Kakuji Temple can transform into a giant robot. But is it really true? Oh yeah, of course it's true. Etu brute. Gaius Julius Caesar, his many accomplishments led to his name being used as a title for later Roman emperors. Uh, it became a title after his reign as the last dictator of the Roman Republic. Um, so yeah, those are both, you know, uh, heroes or, you know, rulers, the emperor uh, style does make sense. And, you know, the solid, stable, uh, kind of masculine figure. Um, very focused individuals, uh, and they're really cool. Uh, I, I really enjoy the Caesar persona, given you know some of the context there, um, the title, as well as it's a direct reference to the original Gaius Julius Caesar there. Hmm. Yeah. And I think we saw some. Like I don't know for, for whatever reason Caesar really makes sense. Rocky Pico. With with the emperor like Arcana kind of attachment, right? Mm. Specifically, oh there it is. Ooh, yeah, justice. Azianga. Let's do. Let's get Siegfried to level. Um, excellent. Because when when he gains that persona, well, that's how we do it. I feel like he is. He's actually kind of like. Stepping up into a position, mm -hmm. because when Shinjiro died, I, th I feel like in the orphanage, even though Akihiko was across as the more like level-headed one, so to speak, there's lots of implications that Shinjiro was the one that was really looking out for the for them, especially as like mm. brothers in a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. He was like mm -hmm. the older brother to some degree. Yep. Mm -hmm. And so when Shinjiro died. Akihiko kind of picked up the mantle that he left behind. Sure. In the same way that a ruler might take the throne if his brother were to die. Yeah. So. I Yeah, that makes sense to me. This is going to be a tough one, by the way, right here. Because um, these are all extremely good. Uh, we want Brave Blade. Brave Blade is incredible. Um... I'm almost inclined to say drop Vile Assault. Um, we'll lose Pierce off of Siegfried, but it's the lowest powered yeah, Fizz move. Yeah, that's fair. And keeping charge is a good idea, and all those passives are absolutely amazing. Yeah, they, so they really are. <laughs> we have other sources of Vile Assault. Oh, and then we get a Slash Amp in the next, on his next, like... Mm -hmm. oh we're gonna gosh. have to make another hard call there. Oh boy. Um, I'm, I'm not sure what we're gonna do one. there. We'll figure it out. Yep. Um, the Nibelung ore. I bet we'll find something good in there. Let's open it up. Yeah, that's a unique one. In order to gain a weapon. Let's see. This is a really, really There's good weapon. Up. Not surprising. Oh way. my god. Yeah. That's. Incredible. I want to say yeah. that anything that has to be crafted using the Persona leveled items along with something else, specifically the unique ones, not like the Soul Sea Droplet, which those have some good stuff too, but like like the named unique Persona items mm -hmm. are mm -hmm. probably going to give us some of the best equipment we can get. Um. Okay, yeah, that's um, okay. That's not the ultimate weapon for Junpei, but it is one of the best ones. It is really, really, really good. I don't even know. That's ridiculously good for a weapon. Okay. Well, <laughs> we'll, we'll deal with that, those stats later, because I'm not even sure how that isn't the ultimate weapon. I'm going to get sidetracked looking at stats here. Um. <laughs> That's it. Enemy down. Come on. 
Yeah, we'll, we'll deal with that a little bit later. Uh, given the name of Junpei's best weapon, uh, I actually do understand the choice, but it's just pretty crazy. Um, given what that weapon does. Mm. Anyway, any other thoughts? Um, I, I, I think I, I agree with you about Akihiko there. Just It was a time when he really... You can get all three of these. I can. Uh, I'm Cyrus. Yeah. <laughs> All right. That is a really Not potent major Arcana what? combo right there. Yeah, it is. Um. <sighs> hey, scout. Let's not. Come on, dude. Let's not actually. Oh, okay. Um, dude. Just because there's no telling what enemies we're going to run to in here. Fair enough. So. But dude, no. yeah, right. <laughs> oh man! Ooh, See, look, there's a monad there. door there. See, if I had sent yep. him, I would have regretted that. Yep, indeed. Um, we were just talking about Shinjiro, so uh, I will go ahead and move on to the Hierophant, uh, which is uh, Aragaki's um, persona. Arcana uh, for caster. Uh, the Hierophant is very interesting for Shinjiro, in my opinion. Uh, what one enemy are we dealing with? Do you need resistances here? Uh, no, I got it. Okay, cool. I figured this one out um, when we were talking about something else earlier. Okay, cool. The Hierophant re represents traditional values and institutions. It may indicate the need to obtain conventional spiritual or life advice. Do not rock the boat, <laughs> is what the Hierophant it might be telling you if you draw it. Which is very interesting given Shinjiro and how unconventional and just anti-institution he is. So, I'm of the opinion that the Hierophant is representative of Shinjiro in its reversed configuration. Which indicates the need to do the opposite. To break with convention, buck tradition, rock the boat. It's probably the only way this can be interpreted as a representative of him and his journey. Um, it's possible it was reversed due to what happened to him. You know, he might have been a much more traditional guy back in the day, and then all of this insanity happened to him. You know, right, yeah. people dying and things like that. It makes sense. Um, I don't think we know enough about him other than uh, him... Uh, Aragaki, Sonata, and Kirijo were all um, the original um, C's members. Right. Um, so... Crunch him, crunch him, crunch him. Nice. I like that sword that Makoto has right yeah, now. Yeah, it's real fun. <laughs> one more, one more. That's good. I love that. I love how many we can get. It's amazing. Yeah. It's good stuff. It's going to be really good when we finally get our full arcana and there's going to be like six cards to pick from. Yup. So, Castor is a hero in Greek mythology. He is Polydeuces' half-brother but doesn't share his brother's immortality. He was... What do you want to do? He was... Struck and killed by an arrow, after which he and his brother became stars in the constellation Gemini. Uh, the stars are named Castor and Pollux. Uh, so, Castor and Polydeuces. Right. Um, and then, Austin, I think you had a comment on that uh, one. Yeah, so, I mean, that descriptor, right, was shot and killed mm -hmm. by an arrow. <laughs> it, yep. It's. Um, I just thought it was interesting that even in the description of this... Persona, right? Because this is the description of the persona that we're reading off of. Correct. Yeah. Yep. It's, there's a foreshadow to what happens to Shinjiro in there. Yep. Um, yes. Because, I mean, replace arrow with bullet. Yeah. It's perfect. Yeah. I He, he got shot. <laughs> mm hmm. Hell yeah. Um, yeah. And they, he and Sonata had a kind of a brother's like relationship. You know, they were close, right? They were close friends. Yeah, and so I, I just, it's so interesting how much that ties together. Like mm -hmm. it's, 
I haven't really dissected Persona 4 or 5 in the way that we're doing now. But mm -hmm. it, it makes me wonder like how they relate with their respective characters in those games too, just because of how much we're diving into this. Like clearly Atlas's team has put a lot of thought into this. Oh yeah, absolutely. Things end up fitting very well. It's not quite as complex as the Xeno universe in my opinion, but it's it's close. And if you get into mainline Megaton, it's complex in a totally different way. So. Right. <laughs> Eternal Sand. All right. So, Eternal Sand repels ice and electric, nulls light and dark, and is weak to slash and strike. Oh, okay. So it is still weak to at least slash. That's interesting. Yeah, pour on the fizz damage. Slash and strike. Okay. Yep. <laughs> that'll do it. That's the way. Uh-huh, uh-huh. I like it. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. Look at all that damage. Love that. Yeah, love that you journey love for you. You love to see it. You love to see <laughs> Yep. <laughs> Take that! <laughs> what is this other one? Physical attack will do more double. Oh. It's not bad. Yeah, that's worth it. Actually, that combined with Scarlet Havoc would be pretty nuts. Yeah, it would be. That's okay. We're still gonna... We're still gonna do something. Oh, we're gonna... Yeah. Maggio here. Wipe the floor. How could Man. you? Ignore. But I have a Narita soda. I mean, whatever you want. Can I use this? Yeah. All right. What's next? Boys is just so mad at me. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? See you later. <laughs> 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 Ah, uh, Jinpei. <laughs> Perfect. Excellent. Okay. Two homunculus. Ooh. Or maximum HP increased by 10. Or both, because they're both majors. Oh, you're right. Aha! EXP, baby. Yeah, we are... Oof. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We're gonna be able to hold nine Arcana this round. Mm-hmm. That's the game. Mm. Yeah. Nice. Oh, hello. We're getting those levels now. We did this it. This is speeding up nicely. Yeah. Topaz. Prime to heal or you know, we have EXP boosting items. We really should start using them more. Yeah, that's true. All right, let's see here. Yeah, I'm not sure we're going to be able to get through every single one of these Arcana currently, but that's okay. Yeah, well, probably not some, in this one episode, but we yeah, have we'll, we'll talk plenty about it of the bit. Tartarus to explore. <laughs> yeah, we do. We do. Um, I do want to mention before we keep going through the Persona, though, I would like to bring up the Death Arcana. Huh. Um, so the only thing Death has been associated with currently that I can talk about is Pharos. Uh, Pharos is, or death is, an interesting draw when you're fortune telling. Um, so we have talked about some of the thematic stuff in this game, and that is still pretty relevant here. Curse dies. Uh, but death actually, if it's drawn, does not predict actual death. Um, you never want to, if you're, if you're drawing, right? If you draw death on somebody's fortune, that doesn't mean they're going to die. It's unethical and irresponsible to predict that. Uh, you also don't want to predict other things like pregnancy or, you know, just, just major things like that. Um, and kind of goes along with what I was talking about with fortune telling before, where it's it that's not really how it works. Um, so death represents spiritual transformation and new beginnings, as well as radically and perhaps uncomfortable change. It should not be resisted, as it will make the transition difficult and painful. Embracing the change is the best idea when confronted with this arcana. Um, so I do sort of feel like death has a little bit of a dual meaning, but for the basic meaning of the fortune, that is what death actually refers to. 
Which I think is pretty interesting. It's one of my favorite Arcana for that reason. Yeah. Which isn't to be confused with Tower, which is also kind of indicative of, of major life changes. Yep, Tower is one of my favorites as well. Uh, it's really, really interesting, especially the reversal of Tower. Mm. Would you say that Tower or, or Death is like a more fundamental shift versus Tower, which might be like a, a moment? Or, I mean, it can still be monumental, right? It can still be a big change. Yeah. But, like, Tower yeah. might be something a little more external, I guess. Let me make sure that I explain this correctly real quick here. All right, so the tower... That's a win for the team! Moves. Good job, everyone! <laughs> yeah. yeah! Who's up next? All right, so the tower is actually more fundamental um, when it comes to a change you need to brace yourself for. Mm. So it represents sudden upheaval, unexpected change. Uh, it's usually life-changing, and you usually can't avoid it at all. Um, so, okay, a negative version might be something that just shifts your world in such a way to where it's it's equivalent of a bomb going okay, off. It's like a bombshell. You know, right. whether it's a reveal or a development in your life, it could denote tragedy. So it's actually more drastic than death. Oh, death might nice. be a more of a fundamental realignment, but tower probably will cause it. Ah. Uh. Um, it may precipitate death. Um, so, if they're positive, it could be, you know, a fundamental life circumstance change. What do we got here? Gracious Cupid? Yeah. Let's take a look. Gracious Cupid is... Weak to strike. Oh. And nulls fire. Alright. Um, so the reversal of tower. Um, very generally speaking, the reversal of tower is basically that you have narrowly avoided some kind of disaster. And you have an experience that you need to learn from. Uh, in order to prevent What's that next? same lesson from coming back around again. Um, it can signify delaying the inevitable, but it could also... It just really, really depends. But it, it is a warning to not try and rebuild what you had, but to seek something new and better to build in place of what was destroyed. Um, and, you know, there, there's a bunch of things that you can apply it to. Love and relationships, money and career, health, th that sort of thing. Uh, but basically, you don't want to be band-aiding a gunshot wound. It's it's a sign you need to change some things if it's reversed. Um, because you keep going how you are, you could encounter an upright tower, which is disastrous. Right. Um, and just a reminder that the same thing that I was talking about with death also applies here. You don't want to predict direct things. Um, it is just a warning that, hey, something big's coming, kind of thing. Um, and again, with regards to fortune telling, in our world, I am not of the belief that these are magical things. We're not predicting things, predicting the future here with this stuff. This is a way of thinking about life and a way of thinking about narrative when it comes to what we're talking about here. So, but I do find it interesting that, you know, delving a little into the social link, the tower social link had so many fundamental life changes. Um, the monk. And, you know, he was kind of trying to pick up the pieces and do some things and, you know, run some fundamental changes because his life wasn't working the way he was doing it, right. you know. He showed up, I believe, rank 8. He was drunk, like, really, really drunk, and we were having to deal with him, like, dealing with some... Heavy stuff in his life. Um, very interesting. Way too slow. Well done avoiding that, Amada Kun. <laughs> Darkness has no effect on this enemy. Darkness, yeah. no threats. 
Does that make sense? Uh, difference between death and the tower there? Yeah, yeah. It, yeah. It's just because they're so similar in the way that, like, mm -hmm. the general description, right? Where it's like, hey, Ready for some you've got this huge thing coming down the pipeline. Mm hmm. And it's going to change you, right? I would say death is more positively oriented mm. than the tower. The tower is much more chaotic and much more disastrous, potentially. Right. Well, that's why I was wondering um, if, like, if if it would be suitable to say that the the tower is more about the external influences that will bring change to your life, whereas death is a more internal shift. It could be, but it could be uh, when it comes to the fundamental like cause of such changes, but the tower can also lead to false beliefs and foundations or unrealistic goals and dreams being torn down. Mm. Uh, there's a reason the card is the tower being struck by lightning and collapsing. Sure. What you've built is being torn to pieces in, in the sense of an upright tower. Yeah, that's fair. It's one of my favorite arcana because of how interesting the meaning is. Ooh, last hey. one. Increase social stat growth on the next day you do activities. Hey, there's that temperance card we had forgotten all about. Yeah, time to be confused again for a while. Matarunda. You got one of those. Eh, up to you. And let's see what we get. Arcana Burst! Ten. The Egeon. Nice. That's worth grabbing. Um, One more. The XP. I can heal myself. I've got plenty of healing items. So yeah, there we go. Yep. Ooh. That's juicy. Very profitable encounter there. Oh yeah. Summary card. <laughs> we did it. Very nice. All right. Um. Yeah. So we'll we'll circle back to some of these. I do want to talk about the fool briefly though uh, before we end this episode. Ooh, nice. Oh, there's a treasure chest. Um. So we do have quite a few others. Uh, the lovers, the chariot, strength, the her the hermit, wheel of fortune, justice, and. That's all. Uh, but we'll we'll come back to those in the next episode. I think We're not all the way through this Tartarus run. So right. Um. So the fool, uh, is Makoto Yuki or the main character, the protagonist, um, base Arcana. Uh, Persona three through five. The main character has what's called the wild card, and it denotes the ability, and it's it's why. Persona 5's main character is called Joker, because he is the trump card when it comes to power, due to his ability to, you know, hold multiple personas. Uh, and Makoto, of course, has the same ability. You can fuse and use different persona. But the base arcana being represented is the Fool uh, by the main character. The Fool represents new beginnings and in the case of our protagonist it represents the journey he's on with the help of the velvet room uh, and igor and elizabeth uh, the fool's journey to find completion it can also be said to represent nothingness uh, and can be seen as undefined with limitless possibility um which is a very interesting way of viewing the wild card. It's sort of a null, so any any arcana mm. can be substituted in there. Uh, it's sort of why the idea of the wild card works for someone who is aligned with the fool. Right. Uh, it also denotes he's on the fool's journey. Right. <laughs> this is sort of Makoto's story. It's not. It's oh, yeah. it's it's an ensemble, but Makoto yeah, is the protagonist. Oh. Oh yeah, the MMO. <laughs> Maya, no! <laughs> um, so, the base persona we get when Makoto first awakens is Orpheus, who is a poet of Greek mythology skilled with the lyre, um, the musical instrument, the lyre. He tried to retrieve his wife Eurydice from Hades, but she vanished 
when he looked back before reaching the surface. He's known as the master of strings and father of songs, capable of such music that even rocks and animals would be compelled to dance. Uh, and Austin, I think you had a note here about oh, well, Makoto in particular. Yeah, right. So he's always seen with his MP3 player and headphones, right? So mm -hmm. um, his attachment to Orpheus in that way makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, I guess... Leonon Sheet. Yeah, go ahead and dump Leonon Sheet. Um, but I think in tandem with that, Orpheus, right? Which, if you don't know the story of Orpheus and his wife, it's interesting because he he does he does speak to Hades directly and, and begs for his life's wife, his wife's life back. And right. um, like I know, I know it's There's clarified that. Uh, she uh, turns to dust or whatever when he turns back. <laughs> well, the, the, the that's because situationally what was happening is that um, I'm still setting up. It'll they, take a little more time. Oh, sorry, my brain. Um, it's okay. After after going back and forth with Hades, specifically Hades, essentially relents because Orpheus is pleading and presenting his case to Hades mm -hmm. persistently. Yep. And so Hades is like, fine. All right, fine. She will follow you out. You just have to walk out without looking back. Mm -hmm. And I don't remember what props him to look back outside, outside of, I think, just general self-sabotage, internal thinking. Um, sure. Like where where it's just like, is she really gonna be behind me? Well, Hades on her, his deal, kind of like that internal dialogue, right? Mm -hmm. Um. So I'm not as versed in the story as I'd like to be. I guess the short end of that, but that's what happens. He he almost makes it. He's like at the cusp of making it out, and he turns around, and she's just gone. You know, like yep. Um, which is just, it's so painful. <laughs> it's, it's, yep. Uh, um, so yeah, I think, I think in a lot of ways, it's kind of how Makoto is with Tartarus, right? Hmm. Um, in the sense that Tartarus is described as the underworld. Right. And we are constantly going into Tartarus. As mm -hmm. the party, obviously, but Makoto is leading the charge. True. Um, so I think in some ways there's that comparison as well. Will this work? All right. Yeah. There we go. It's pretty poignant. Uh, Orpheus is very important um, because Makoto is the wild guard. There are other persona that are very important, uh, as you recall from the beginning of the game. Um, a second persona showed up. Yes. Uh, at the very beginning of the game, which we have and seen. So it's that out one there. now. Yes. So we know its name. Uh, but we will circle back to that once we actually obtain that persona, because that one's very important to have. Right. But it. But that is. Um... Nice. Yeah, we get all these. Um, mm -hmm. But unlike, I think, Persona Four and Five, that persona that we saw is mm -hmm. not a direct like awakened version of say Orpheus for Makoto that's true um yeah there there is one thing in in, in looking at information on this I will say Makoto is a little bit more complex than the other two protagonists we're familiar with so the other two would be Yunar Kami from Persona 4 and uh, Ren Amamiya from Persona 5. Right. Um, um, Makoto is a little more complex in his relationship to the wild card and Persona in general. Sure. Which is very interesting. I find it very intriguing. Yeah, I guess that's kind of my, my point, though, is that he's not Are you okay, falling into Leader, at least... Maybe that's enough for tonight? Um... Oh, there's a treasure chest. 
Good talking, I'm trying to think. <laughs> um. It's our chance to go first. Two enemies. Okay. You can take them. So single enemy. Yeah. With the other protagonists, even mm -hmm. though they are the wild card and even though they can use any persona, there's still right. like a core element of them that is, you know, their their persona. It's why this it's why it's their starting one, right? There's a core mm -hmm. element of them who who they are in that, which is why you like Izanagi and Persona 4, right? Um, yep. So the fact that this second persona appears not only at the very beginning, but it's still part of Makoto. And it mm -hmm. was transformed from Orpheus, if I remember correctly. It was such a long time ago. Um, Correct. That is what happens. So, like... He emerges from Orpheus. Right. So, in a lot of ways... And this speaks to your complexity. But um, Makoto, mm -hmm. at his core, is kind of divided. Yeah. In a way. Yeah. Light doesn't seem to be effective. Okay. Good. That's what I wanted to say. Okay. And I'm just curious how that plays out. And yep, specifically the story of Orpheus and his wife. I'm, I'm curious how that's going to play into Makoto for who, how he is. I didn't mean to switch to him because I was talking about him. <laughs> Don't have a. Yeah. Okay. that. All right. Well, you know, there's something in here. I'm sure. There we go. Yeah. It's fine. Wow, Junpei is really low HP. I don't think either of us were paying attention to that. No, we were too busy chit-chatting. <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> He's not dead yet. Yeah, we'll we'll heal him up here in a second. Yep, yep. Oh, we got heck yes. Oh, we're getting those good skill cards now. Finally. Rank 10. Love that. Yep. But yeah, I, I guess for me it was just the traveling, and then I got a tangent. Got Tang here. T tangential? Yes. Tang I just went on a tangent. Thank you. Yeah. Well, Mario, you got uh, like it, nothing. Buddy. It is cool that um, the liar is also mentioned in the story of um, Hermes as well. Mm. Um. Hermes' relationship with Apollo, uh, which I don't think Orpheus has much of a relation to Apollo. I could be wrong about that. Um, let's take a look. And I appear to be wrong about that. So Apollo gave Orpheus a lyre and taught him how to play. So, it all sort of is connected. I mean, that, I think, just speaks loosely, too. You know, I think Junpei was our initial, you know, bro mm -hmm. uh, that joined the party, um, along with Yukari as well, uh, which we'll get to Yukari in the next episode. I think we're, we're good on the Arcana discussion for this episode, but, you know, lots of cool stuff to think about with regards to this and the depth of it and... Um, you know, I think thinking back, a lot of this stuff would be a little difficult to cover piecemeal because of how much it all interconnects. Right. But, yeah, there is more to come uh, from the notes I have on this in the next episode, and there will be more we'll need to cover uh, going forward as well. So, Right. But it, it shouldn't be so many at once uh, after this because I think this... We've hit a point where it was a good idea to go through a lot of this stuff. Yeah, I agree. And this is the uh, the thing that Dan and I have been kind of ass, huh? mulling over for some time. Because, like, with the Young Gears, we were able to take time pretty regularly and dive into the lore. Which, mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> you maybe that's really not your cup cool of tea, but it's something that we really enjoy is to go through a story and, and break down narratively what's happening. Mm-hmm. Oh, good. Please Perfect. Be um, 
Perfect timing. Yep, before you climb the more combination of your counter, choose your squad based on the enemy types of one approach. Okay, yep. This is, I sent someone on a higher floor. The floor we haven't been to yet, though. We'll get there soon. Um, 184. Yeah. Okay, cool. But, yeah, this is a good stopping point. I'm going to head on down. Yep, yep. Um, but that being said, we want to continue to bring that to you. And one of the, one of our points of consideration was how early in this game we weren't able to dig into too much partially mm -hmm. because we didn't understand the story because we're still learning it because we're not familiar with the game as in like we haven't played it before and I think the other part is because of the just the nature of the narrative the flow and the pacing we have so much more access to information now that we didn't have mm -hmm. it then so now we can actually really dig into this a little bit deeper yeah so yeah I, I think we've kind of naturally hit a point where like all right there's some meat to dig into here when it comes to the material right. um that is this game so yeah i mean fully agree there and uh you know i do think if you guys are interested in persona 4 or persona 5 in the future uh, we will have a little bit more. If you're interested in the Persona 2 duology, that's going to be another one where we're both going to be experiencing that for the first time. Um, unless it's, you know, in the distant future and I've already played it at that point or something like that. Right. But, you know, we'll, we'll deal with that when it comes. But 4 and 5, we have both played through the entire narrative of, which is why we can kind of draw those comparisons. Um, right. This has been brilliant, though. I really, I really am enjoying this game. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I look forward to seeing where it leads us. I mean, this is our first time in Tartarus since defeating the last shadow. We've got the last old document to retrieve per um, Elizabeth request, but that also means there's more to learn there, right? Because his old documents have been very revealing about what's been happening in the 10 year prior events. They sure have. So, which that'll be another fun thing to kind of start unpacking as we get a little closer. To, re to revealing more about that. Uh, Absolutely. Yeah, I'm looking forward to the old document at the end of this run. We're around halfway through, roughly halfway through the, the run, th this latest Tartarus run here. So. Yeah, because we got to get to um, 198, right? 99, something like that? Correct. Yeah, okay. That's 198, that is correct. Yeah, yeah. So. and uh, yeah, we'll be getting a Fusion Series request by the end of this, I believe, if we don't have it already. So that'll be a cool one. Mm -hmm. Um and yeah, yeah, uh, we'll we'll be back next time with uh, this Tartarus run part two and more discussion of the Arcana. Um, there aren't quite as many to cover next time, so right. it'll be a little little less uh, fast paced, uh, you know. But yeah, hope you're enjoying it. Uh, this was some cool information uh, in researching this and just checking the connections between all of it. So. Yeah, if you like it, leave us a comment, leave us a like and subscribe, hit the algorithm for us. We appreciate yep. it. We appreciate you. Um, we appreciate your participation. It is something we like to see. So, yeah, keep at it. Yeah, of course. And um, especially your own opinions about how they tie into the IE Arcana as we've explained them or your own understanding of them, whether we think we're way off base or if you agree or... If there's caveats to that, I don't know, whatever. Or it could be completely unrelated. Just kind of reinforcing <laughs> the comments thing. We love hearing you guys. Um, yeah. And if you find that you just can't stand not having something to watch by Chilnanigans, uh, first of all, thank you. That's high praise. But second of all, uh, we do have plenty of other series that are completed. Full playlists of 30 plus videos from main series. Um, 10, 15 episodes from like, our, from like our tea times. Same thing goes for our more casual Friday stuff. So check it all out. There's lots of stuff there. Lots of good times. Lots of laughter. Lots of breaking down of heavy, thick narrative. So uh, pick your poison, I guess, in that regard. <laughs> yes, indeed. Um, one thing else. Thank you so much for letting us be a part of your day. And we do hope that you're able to relax and decompress and have a good time with us. And we just hope that you have a wonderful day the rest of the day. I can say day another 18 times in the sentence. That'd be great. Um, day, 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 day. Anyway, <laughs> y'all have a great one.
We'll, we'll see you next time, that's everyone. That's right. We'll see you in the next video. <laughs> Bye now. Diddly diddly do 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 do. Thanks for watching.